let's do the seventh property of z transform which is convolution according to the convolution property convolution property states that if z transform of x sub 1 of n equals to x sub 1 of z and z transform of x sub 2 of n equals to x sub 2 of z then z transform of x sub 1 of n convolved with x sub 2 of n equals to x sub 1 of z convolved with x sub 2 of z that's what convolution property states according to convolution property if z transform of x sub 1 of n equals to x sub 1 of z and z transform of x sub 2 of n equals to x sub 2 of z then the z transform of the convolution of x sub 1 and x sub 2 will be the convolution of their respective z transform if you take the convolution of x sub 1 of n and x sub 2 of t and then take their z transform they equals to x sub 1 of z convolved with x sub 2 of z this is what convolution means this asterisk symbol is the indication of the convolution now let me check the mathematical proof we're gonna prove that the left side equals to the right side in time domain if x of n equals to x sub 1 of n convolved with x sub 2 of n equals to summation of x sub 1 of n minus k into x sub 2 of k where k starts from negative infinity up to positive infinity look the signal x of n is in time domain so if it equals to x sub 1 of n convolved with x sub 2 of n equals to summation of x sub 1 of n minus k into x sub 2 of k look we have used the time shifting property we have shifted n by k look it means that the convolution of x sub 1 of n and x sub 2 of n equals to summation of x sub 1 of n minus k into x sub 2 of k for the x sub 1 of n I have applied the time shifting property if you forgot what is time shifting property just go back and check the time shifting property according to the time shifting property we have shifted n by k we can apply the exact same time shifting property the time shifting property is for the x sub 1 of n for the x sub 2 of n I'm gonna plug in x sub 2 of k because remember for the n I have k k equals to negative infinity up to positive infinity which is the two-sided equation so I can say that my x of n equals to summation of x sub 1 of n minus k into x sub 2 of k I'm gonna plug in x of n equal to this expression in the equation of the z transform so if my x of n equals to this expression then z transform of x sub 1 of n convolved with x sub 2 of n equals to summation into summation of x sub 1 of n minus k into x sub 2 of k into z to the negative n look according to the z transform I have z transform of x of n equals to summation of x of n into z to the negative n but what is my x of n we know that my x of n is x sub 1 of n convolved with x sub 2 of n which equals to this expression so I'm gonna plug in this expression for the x of n because x of n equals to this expression just plug in all this stuff here as I said I use the time shifting property by using the time shifting property I have such kind of equation where I have n minus k n minus k which means that n has been shifted by k it is according to the time shifting property so I can write summation of x sub 2 of k into summation of x sub 1 of n minus k into z to the negative n since everything has a product the summation has the product with this one and here is the product product with the x sub 2 of k and product with the z to the negative k so I can interchange the terms I can put x sub 2 of k first and then x sub 1 of n minus k on the second number and also I can put z to the negative n from here and can put it here you can change their places from here up to here or from here up to there therefore can I pick x sub 2 of k and put it here with this summation just pick x sub 2 of k from here and put it there with the summation which is n equals to negative infinity up to positive infinity pick x sub 2 of k and put it there and then put z to the negative n with this x sub 1 of n minus k now according to the z transform formula now according to the z transform formula can I write summation of x sub 2 of k into x sub 1 of z into z to the negative k when you look to this expression inside the parenthesis it is the expression of the z transform for what for x sub 1 
So it will be the Z transform of X sub 1, X sub 1 of Z. Now according to the time shifting property, we're going to have the product of Z to the negative K with the Z transform, remember. Summation of X sub 1 of N minus K into Z to the negative N will be X sub 1 of Z times Z to the negative K. I repeat it, according to the time shifting property, we're going to have the product of Z to the negative K with the Z transform. I have taken the Z transform for X sub 1. So it will be the Z transform of X sub 1 times Z to the negative K. Let me walk you through back the time shifting property. Just to refresh you again. According to the time shifting property, we do the time shift of K in X of N, which makes the multiplication of Z to the negative K in Z transform. If we do the time shift of K in X of N, which is X of N minus K, the Z transform of X of N minus K will be the Z to the negative K times X of Z. You're going to have the product of Z to the negative K with the Z transform. So apply the exact logic, which is the time shifting property. We have the product of X sub 1 of Z times Z to the negative K. As we just saw that if you use the time shifting property here, Z transform of X sub 1 of N minus K times Z to the negative N equals to X sub 1 of Z times Z to the negative K. We have Z to the negative extra, extra with the Z transform of this X sub 1. So for this whole stuff inside the parentheses, I'm going to put x sub 1 of z times z to the negative k and put summation of x sub 2 of k as it is. So it equals to summation of x sub 2 of k times z to the negative k into x sub 1 of z. Nothing to be worried, just put this z to the negative k and put it there with the x sub 2 of k. Put it here. So I will have x sub 2 of k times z to the negative k. Now again, when you look to this part, this part, summation of x sub 2 of k times z to the negative k. It is the equation of the z transform of x sub 2. So I can write x sub 2 of z. It is exactly like summation of x of n times z to the negative n, which equals to x of z. So I can write x sub 2 of z into x sub 1 of z. For summation of x sub 2 of k times z to the negative k, I put x sub 2 of z because it is the equation of the Z transform of X sub 2. As I said, it is exactly like summation of X of N times Z to the negative N, which equals to X of Z. But my X signal is X sub 2, so I'm going to put X sub 2 of Z, which implies that Z transform of X sub 1 of N convolved with X sub 2 of N equals to X sub 1 of Z convolved with X sub 2 of Z. And that's what we proved it here mathematically that when you take the Z transform of the convolution of X sub 1 of N and X sub 2 of N, at the end you're going to get X sub 1 of Z times X sub 2 of Z, which is actually the convolution of X sub 1 of Z and X sub 2 of Z. So this left side equals to the right side. And this is going to be the final proof. That's what we proved mathematically. But what will be the region of convergence? The region of convergence for this property will be the R sub X sub 1 and R sub X sub 2. Whatever region of convergence we have for the X sub 1 signal, and also whatever region of convergence we have for the X sub 2 signal, you're going to take their intersection. The intersection of those two regions of convergence will be the region of convergence for this property. This is going to be the region of convergence. So there was a mathematical proof.